a so, human. So you're it? saying for a human to be a human, he has, they to, have have a to, have he has to have a legs heart. Legs has to have a heart. You're right. He has to so have are a you saying right? right one he second. Has to have a, a, during a heart transplant, are you saying that a human stops being human? The topic wait, wait, is wait, wait, abortion. Wait, 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 no, wait. keep it on me, because we're talking about abortion. And Islam does not give clear guidance as to when life begins. No, but I don't get your point. Like, why don't you concentrate? He doesn't get my point. Did you get my point, sir? He got my point. Did you get my point? He got my point. Did you get my point? So everyone around us understands my point, except him. There's no agreement amongst Muslim scholars about when life is unabortable. Here you have a religion that claims that it is from God and it can't tell you when life begins. So what I want to talk about, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, is I want to talk about what we can learn from the pro-life movement the Christian pro-life movement. Last Saturday, I went on the pro-life march that marched uh, through London towards uh, Westminster. And I, I want to talk about what I observed because I think that there's a lot of things that Christians can learn from the pro-life movement. And the first thing that I observed is that what you saw in the pro-life movement was that Christians had organized themselves politically. They'd organized themselves to do something, not simply to be silent whilst abortion continues in our society. What we saw was that Christians were united. Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox were all stood together. They were all acting together as a single block to stand against the crime and the injustice of abortion. What we saw was, come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. No, stand here, stand here, stand here next to me. Just, just don't block my face. So what we saw was, what we saw was that Christians were mobilized. They were mobilized against um, the injustice of abortion. They weren't just praying about it, but they were politically active about it. The groups that set up the pro-life march and participated in the pro-life march were doing training and offering training about being pro-life and about how you can defend life politically, economically, in debate and in discussion. And most importantly, they were resisting the culture of death. They were resisting the evil of injustice. Okay, thank you. Oh, you, you okay. want to show that side as well. Okay, so this is something that Christians across the whole body of Christ need to learn. That we need to organize, that we need to unite, that we need to mobilize, that we need to train, and that we need to resist. What I also saw was the fact that activism engages people and makes matters disputable. The very fact that so many Christians, thousands of Christians, marched against the injustice of abortion means that publicly the discussion is not finished, that it's still up for grabs, that we can still debate things. And that is why it is important for us as Christians to be activists according to our faith. Okay? God bless. Okay, take care. God bless you. Now, what else did I see at this pro-life march? I saw ecumenism in practice. Catholics, Protestants, um, Orthodox working together on, on a cause. And what were the fruits of that unity? The fruits of that unity was that they were stronger. Each group collectively was stronger as a composite than each group would have been stood on their own. They share, were sharing resources, which is something that can only happen when you tear down the barriers of denominationalism. They were sharing information about what's happening on the abortion topic and the pro-life movement. 
which can only happen when you tear down denominational differences. They were networking together, sharing contact details, arranging to meet up outside of the pro-life march. And they had strength in numbers, so strong that they were able to stop the traffic, so strong that they were willing to, able to fill the field outside of the Houses of Parliament, so strong that they dwarfed in number the feminists that came to protest against them. What I also saw in the pro-life march was public evangelism, the power of the procession, the power of wearing your faith on your sleeve, being a light in the world, being a city upon a hill, being a lamp that shines in the darkness. And the thing about this kind of public evangelism, the thing about this kind of public evangelism is it draws people in to the cause. It draws people in to the topic. People had to engage with it because they couldn't ignore it. We live in a consumer culture, a consumer society. And a consumer culture and a consumer society <coughs> bends itself to the visible consumer. Visible consumers create markets. Markets create influence in society. If we as Christians operate as a market, society will hear us. And that is why as Christians, we need to take the lessons of the pro-life movement and apply it to other things. The most profound thing about the pro-life movement is that it is politics being guided by theology, not theology being guided by modern secular politics. The people are working from a Christian worldview and then they are deciding what is the political consequences of being such a Christian in that way? Finally, my appeal to you, my brothers and sisters, the thousands that are going to watch this on SoCo, is take these lessons that I have observed about the pro-life movement and apply them to other things. Apply them to how we respond to the persecuted church. Apply them to how we respond to all political questions and issues from a Christian perspective. Because it's only when we unite, it's only when we train, it's only when we mobilize, it's only when we, it's only then when we've organized that we can effectively resist and resist we must because the persecuted church needs our resistance and so the church must mobilize on this issue and so many others including in your evangelism and that ladies and gentlemen is the end of that talk thank you, thank you very much that was very nice you weren't even listening <laughs> So, no, I'm saying everything you say is good and right. But Islam doesn't believe that. No, I'm telling you my opinion. Okay, you. but Islam believes that you can abort a child before ensoulment. Abortion. I was abortion in Islam. I really, I'm not, I don't have, know these details. Okay. I only know the five pillars. Fair enough. And main things. Okay. And, and to be nice to everybody. And, so let's have a, a decent conversation. Yeah. I, can, I, can I start with a question? No, no, no. Because I have a question. The, the topic is abortion. I want to talk I about don't, abortion. I don't know about right. It. Well, I'm going to tell you, and I can provide my evidence, okay. that I, Islam permits I didn't, I abortion. Don't want to know. You don't want to know. Yeah. Right. Not from you, because you lie. Okay, so maybe you listen to some Islamic scholars. Let me just pull them up for you. They don't lie. Okay. The Islamic can scholars. I ask you my question first? You can, but I'm still talking about abortion. Okay, then I'll, I'll have to come back later then. Okay, so let's talk about what Islam teaches on abortion, right? So I want you to hear 
what Muslim scholars say about abortion. It doesn't matter what scholars say. Right. This is a statement. Only, only Allah and his Prophet. This is a statement made by Mecca al Mukarrama, which is the council of Muslim scholars in Saudi Arabia. And they say this listen, grossly malformed with untreatable severe conditions proved by medical investigation and decided upon by a committee formed by competent trustworthy physicians and provided that abortion is requested by the parents and that the fetus is less than 120 days computed from the moment of conception. Islam permits abortion. Did you hear that? Your religion permits abortion. Now, let me ask you this question. When does life begin? He doesn't know about these things. So, life begins according to Islam. Life comes in two stages. The, the life begins in, in fertilization, from fertilization. But the value of that life isn't considered human life until ensoulment. Which is why Muslims, and there are multiple opinions, disagree about when abortion is permissible. Some say it's when ensoulment happens. Some say it's when voluntary movement of the fetus occurs. Some say it happens uh, later than this or earlier than this. There's no agreement amongst Muslim scholars about when life is unabortable. Now think about this for a minute. Here you have a religion that claims that it is from God and it can't tell you when life begins. And so some Muslims are in effect saying that other Muslims are killing human life. And some other Muslims are saying that some other Muslims are not killing human life. And they don't agree. Now, isn't this meant to be a perfected religion? Doesn't it say, on this day I have perfected your religion? Remember when I made that argument to Ali Dawa and to the Muslims? And what did they say? They said that this verse about the perfected religion is speaking about that which is halal and haram. Well, surely killing people, it falls into the remit of what's halal and what's haram. But if you can't give a clear definition of when life begins, that it's quite possible that some Muslims are saying that killing is halal and other Muslims are saying that killing is haram. And this is why Islam is not clear guidance. This is why Islam is not a religion from God. By contrast, we Christians believe, and I know it's not a popular opinion, but we Christians believe that life begins from conception. There is no disagreement amongst those who know the faith about when life begins. The Bible is absolutely clear about when life begins. And that means abortion is murder. All abortion is murder. And this is why we need to have clear guidance, guidance that Islam does not give you. There are two Muslims in the audience. When? Why do the Muslims always bring up Christianity? Come and talk. Oh, they run away. So let's, let's just explain why Muslims are camera phobic. Because every time we debate Muslims on camera, they know that we get the better of them in argument and they know that Islam looks bad. And that's why he runs. Okay, don't put him on camera. Stand there so I can hear you. You hold the microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you that's keep, it. JC, Do keep you the camera stand on there me. And then listen to that. So what was your point? My question is, yeah. according to Islam, uh, when does life begin? When you're born. When you're born. When you're born. He said that. Is that an Islamic position? That's, no, that's what, I, that's what I think it says. What, what, what does the Sharia law teach? What do you mean Sharia law? So are you saying you believe in abortion? No, I don't believe in abortion. But you believe that life begins when you're born? Yeah. Is abortion killing? Yeah. Are you born? No. Right, so when does life begin? 
when you're born. When you're born. born. Brother, yeah. you're, you're not even thinking about your own statements. You've just said life so you're begins about when, when you're, you're born. So you're saying when you're conscious of me. When you know when you when you're when your Consumate. life begins at conception for a Christian. Yeah. Okay. When does life begin in Islam? I'm not I'm not I'm still studying so I wouldn't know in Islam. But my beliefs are separate to Islam. Are you not Muslim? No, I am Muslim. I'm saying my own beliefs. I'm not because I, I wouldn't know what Islam says because I'm still studying. So I'm not gonna make a point that's gonna make my, my religion look bad, am I correct? Is that okay. fair? Fine. Is so that let fair? me let me tell you let me tell you something you clearly don't know. Amongst Muslims, there is zero agreement about when life begins. Muslims don't agree about when life begins. Now, would you agree with me that when life begins is pretty fundamental? Because if life begins at X point, or someone says that life begins at Y point, if Y point is further along than X point, but the people that say X are correct and Y are wrong, then the people that believe in abortion before the point of why are committing murder. Do you follow that logic? Yeah. So do you agree it's pretty important to know when life begins? Yeah. Right. So why does the perfect religion not tell you when life begins? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, be, able to under, I wouldn't be able to answer that question for you because I'm still studying. Fair enough. I invite you to look at it. Because, because what you're going to find is that there are different opinions about when life begins. And what that means, bro, is that Islam is not clear guidance for mankind. Well, the Bible can't be clear guidance either. Let's look at what the Bible says about Bible life. Corrupt, though, We're talking so about abortion. No, 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 but the Bible is not even... We're not changing the topic. No, no, no I'm just saying, well, we can't abortion. look at the Bible because the Bible has been corrupted over time. So. Okay, you tr well, I want to stick no, to I'm the topic saying, of no, 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 I'm just saying you can't look at the Bible. Let me, let me, all right, I'll address that point. But I'm not, I'm not getting off the topic of abortion. The reality is, if you're a Muslim and you believe that the Bible is corrupt, that means you think the Quran is false. Because the Quran says none can change the words of Allah, and it says that the Torah and the Injil are the words of Allah. So if you believe that the Bible is corrupt, that means Islam is false. If you don't believe that the Torah and the Injil are corrupt, that still means that Islam is false, because the Torah and the Injil contradict the Quran. But the topic is not the Injil or the Torah. The topic is abortion. No, keep it on me, because we're talking about abortion. And Islam does not give clear guidance as to when life begins. This is absolutely of the most fundamental importance, because if you believe that abortion begins at X, sorry, life begins at X or Y point, and these points are different in time, then that means that one of those two groups is committing murder and the other group is not. And if Islam can't give you guidance on something as basic as that, then it is not clear guidance as it claims to be. It is not the perfect religion that it claims to be. Deal with a point. Okay. Okay. No, sidetracking, you said abortion, right, is murder. Yes. Okay, let's say, right, the woman has health issues and she can't, it's either her or the baby. Can she not have an abortion in that circumstance? Do you believe in your Bible that it's still murder? So, let's talk about that. What happens in the case of double jeopardy? So an example of double jeopardy is when an embryo establishes itself in the tube from the ovary to the womb and starts to grow in the tube. That would endanger the woman's life and obviously the baby's life as well. In these situations, Christians believe in the idea of double jeopardy, the idea that by removing the womb, you're saving the woman's life. But the result of that is that the child dies. This is acceptable within the Christian worldview because the action is not designed to abort the child. The action is to remove an organ that is failing within the woman, the womb. And so we Christians have this concept, but we do not believe in abortion. Muslims accept abortion. But the point that I'm making to you is Muslims don't agree where life begins. And that means that some Muslims condemn other Muslims as having committed murder. Other Muslims in other manners as well. 
So what's your point there? My point is, I thought it was clear guidance. I thought it was a perfected religion. Okay, but then there's Catholic and then there's Protestant uh, Christians. So they condemn each other as well. So what's your point? So, what's your point again? Okay, here's the you difference. No, no, no. You can't just say one religion's bad and another one's not. You have to you have to look at both in the same manner. So how can you say, oh, if you're a Catholic, you can't condemn Protestant Christians? You can't. So you can't say that. You can't go along as that, as that point. So what are you going on? Where are so, you going? What's okay. your point? So here's the problem. I can pick up my Bible and so can any Protestant, Catholic or Orthodox and they will see that the Bible is clear. Life begins in the womb. It begins at conception. Muslims cannot do the same with their Quran and their Hadiths because it lacks this guidance. Let me give you an example. In, let me give you an example. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 it states, let me, it's a prophet of Israel. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. So even before life begins, it is destined by God. Which means that abortion is by necessity a rebellion against the will of God. So the Bible is clear. Now, whether a particular Christian agrees with the Bible or disagrees with the Bible is on them. Their deen, the level of their submission, it's on them whether they believe or not. But your Quran, your Hadiths, they don't give you guidance as to where life begins. And that is fundamental to the question of whether abortion is murder or not. How do you reply? Let me look at Let me, let me look at huh? well, If it's clear cut what you're saying in Christianity, then why are you telling this to the Christians, to the Christian nations that are that the okay. abortions are so high? So let I me mean, answer Muslim, that question. Why am I not saying this to the Christians? There will be thousands of Christians that watch this and I want to state that if you are a Christian and you believe in abortion, you have failed in your discipleship. You are in error. But the Christian faith has clear guidance. Islam does not give clear guidance on this question. This goes against you. You are going to find something. Go on. While you're doing that, let me give you another example. In Galatians, chapter 1, verse 15. But when he who had set me apart before I was born and had called me through his grace. The Bible teaches all life is predestined and therefore abortion is an affront to the will of God. But let me ask you this question as a Muslim. Where is, where does life begin according to Islam? In the womb, you mean? Where does life, no. Where does life begin according to Islam? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? It means in the child. Where does life begin? This, this is an obvious question. He's saying, he's saying, Anyone, like, you know, when you, you understand before you're born, before you're yeah. made, where does life begin? Do you understand my question, JC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand my question? So everyone else understands this question. So I'll ask you again. According to Islam, where does life begin? Well, sperm's alive, isn't it? A sperm's alive, isn't it? Is that what you mean? It's a, a cell that's alive, yes. yes. But it's not a human life. It's not a human life. So you're saying, you're saying a week after. You're, you're, you're saying a week after. You just said on conception. That's where I life believe, begins. Yeah. As a Christian, yeah, I believe because the Bible teaches it. So you're saying as soon as you like make love to your wife, then that's where life begins. Yes, that's why I believe. Well, what do you believe as a Muslim? How, how is that scientifically? Where is that? What, 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 what? Okay, how so is that how is that scientific? Because the only reasonable definition of life is the autonomous gener the autonomous and continuous de generation of cells. I am alive because my body generates cells and will do so up to death. My body will stop generating cells. Where does this continuum of cell generation begin? It begins at fertilization. So my faith corresponds to our findings in science and it corresponds to the teaching of my holy book. But in Islam, Muslim scholars disagree about where life begins. That means that some Muslims automatically think 
that other Muslims are committing murder through abortion. But Islam claims to be clear guidance, perfect guidance for mankind. I have given you an example that proves that it is neither clear nor perfect on a topic that is about haram and halal. If you, so, deal with my point. You're just going against your own point. If it's clear cut, like you said in the Bible, it is. then why are there so many abortions in the Christian nations? Okay, so the brother asks, so the brother asks, why do Christian nations carry out so many abortions if it's clear cut? Yeah. Simple, because they are not disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ in their politics. They are not disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ in their bioethics. Christianity is a complete way of life that embraces the politics and bioethics. The very fact that there are bad Christians or non-Christians in a Christian country does not change what the Bible teaches, nor does it address the point that I've invited the Muslim brother to address multiple times. Where does life begin according to the Quran? There is zero guidance on this question. That's why Muslims make up their own answers. And they make up different answers. And this question's important because people are dying depending on the answer you give. Mostly in Christian nations. People are dying mostly. That's where you should concentrate. I mean, if Islam is a bit flexible, okay. one month, so a we, month and a half, then like, well, what's the problem there? So we like, you're, you're saying you're so no clear answer. cut. Maybe, maybe this brother Hold has on, an if, it's, if it's not clear cut, if it's not clear cut in oh. Islam, like you say, then why are there so less abortions? Do you understand the why, critique? Why are there less abortions? Brother, do you Islam understand the critique that I made? Do you understand what I just said? Yeah, but do you understand my critique? It's, it's a contradiction. Though. Okay, he's not he's listening. Not so, brother, do you understand the critique that I made? He understands it. Sister, did you understand the critique that I made? Yes, she understands it. So the reality is, if Islam claims to be clear guidance, perfected guidance, and it does not tell you when life begins, then that affects the question of whether it is haram or halal to have an abortion, and when you have that abortion. And that means if Muslims have no consensus on this question, on a really fundamental question about whether you're committing murder or not, Islam gives you zero and yet, guidance and, and yet, consensus. And there are less abortions in Islamic countries, regardless of what you're saying. I agree. You're saying you're so clear cut. Yep. Yeah. That the more abortions are in Western nations. Like that Christian doesn't country. address my point. That's what though, I'm saying to you. I know, but I don't get your point. Like, why don't you concentrate? He doesn't get my point. Did you get my point, sir? He got my point. Did you get my point? He got my point. Did you get my point? So everyone around us understands my point except him. And this happens in debate after debate after debate with the Muslims. The Muslim always says, I don't get your point. I don't get your point. But everyone else understands it. I mean, if you're so clear cut, you go the one of the problem, not me. It's so, not us, you're the one of the problem. So the brother makes the mistake of thinking that Europe is Christian or that America is Christian. I want to say Western Europe is post-Christian. America is post-Christian. And their abortions increased as they rejected the Christian faith. When countries adopt Christianity, like Poland is, like Hungary is, like Russia is, they reduce abortions. They make it illegal to have abortions. They don't make it legal. As it says in Psalm 139, verses 13 and 15, For thou didst form my inward parts, thou didst knit me together in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from thee when I was being made in secret, intricately wrought in the depths of the earth. The Bible is clear. Life begins at conception. No exception. No exception. And those that practice abortion yeah. are practicing murder. And Muslims have no clear guidance 
about when life begins. Which means that there is a fuzz, a grey area, a debatable point about when and where you can have an abortion. Which means that some Muslims are condemning other Muslims as doing something haram. And some Muslims are saying that other Muslims are doing something halal. How is that perfect, clear guidance? When it contradicts itself. The embryo is not formed. If the embryo is not formed, then, he, he can, then he abortion. He can come here. Did you hear me, Bob? So, if the embryo has not been formed, there's no formation on the embryo, and it's still a chewy, uh, like how it's being described, then where, where's the life? I mean, it's not a life yet. It's not, it hasn't been... Okay, right, hasn't let's, been formed. let's accept your argument. Now, just show me in the Quran or the Hadith where it says that. Yeah. Yeah. Because the reality is, Muslims have different points at which abortion is acceptable. Some say 40 days, some say 140 days. There's a bloody big difference between the number 140 and 40. 100 to be precise. Muslims do. It's easier to say. Where? Show us the reference. Show us the reference. Show us the reference. Have you found your passage yet? Anyway, brother, I want to. I'm going to stop because I want to do another talk. No, no, no. I want to do another talk. Yep. You, but you already admitted you didn't yeah. know what Islam taught on this, so you need to go away and do I've just told you, I just told you before the embryo forms. Before the embryo forms. Before the, as it's a true, as, as Bro, it's still the, a... The, the embryo forms from the moment it's fertilised. He has not he has to know. Yes, it does. It splits into two cells, then into four cells, then into eight cells, then into 16 cells, then into 13 cells. The process of embryo formation is a continuum from conception. So you're saying a human is a human when they've got legs? Well, so arms and a heart. That's a human. So you're saying for a human to be a human, he has to have a heart. He has to have a heart. Legs has to have a heart. Right, he has to have a heart. So you say, right, one second. During a heart transplant, are you saying that a human stops being human? Well, that's an exception. Oh, that's an exception. Well, that's not abortion, is it? <laughs> that's why we say you know what I mean? Look, no abortion, you're playing tricks. no exception. You're playing tricks with words. That's all you're doing. You're playing tricks. You know full well no, what the scholars say. No, because your logic doesn't you know make full sense. Well what, no, your logic don't make sense. If it's so clear cut, you should be addressing your own people. Bro, you need to go away and study. That's what you should you be doing. You need to go away and study. Islam, Islam. What's that? Okay. We're flexible. Right. So, and that's the problem. He says we're flexible. And that's the problem. They are flexible. Sharia law is flexible. It's just whatever the scholar says that it is at the time. And that's not clear guidance. It's not perfected. It's just the invention of a bunch of scholars. Okay. So I want to I try and finish the talk.